Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today with a different docking station. It is targeted for laptops, but although I've tested with four laptops and we can use basically any laptop available on the market, there are some desktops that we can use as well. Like this one right over here. So a awesome docking station and we have reviewed so many here on the channel that it's not common to be so excited with a docking station, which as you can tell, I am. But that being said, let's go and take a closer look at it. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below so this is a really cool docking station not only because of the connectivity which is a lot and we are going to check it out and see the speeds and whatnot but the flexibility usually we have docking stations for slimmer laptops like the macbook air which we will have to decide the docking station that we want and probably it's like this and this one right over here the way that it works is that when i push the laptop down it will fit perfectly just like this it's completely solid and this was one of the questions that i had when i saw the specifications of the docking station because i saw okay it has rubber right over here it's really well made solid brushed aluminium all over the place and just here at the middle it has this really thick rubber which is really strong and this is the magic this is the system so if i have a macbook air by the way this is the m1 macbook air so the previous generation you can check out the specifications and whatnot this is a windows laptop a xiaomi with eight years old at this moment but check this out bam there we go it doesn't matter the dimensions and whatnot it will work perfect and the color i think that it fits better than that one and if i grab my macbook pro this is the 14 inches m1 pro so design specifications and whatnot it's easy for you to find and if we put it right over here we can see that it will bam it will close on both sides so it makes it really secure really really cool indeed and this laptop which is the n1 this is the windows computer that i use on my daily videos that i do on tutorials about windows and whatnot and it is a bit thicker as you know it has dual screens by the way which is great but the main point is if i put it right over here it could be a bit thicker no issues bam there we go i can use it like any other laptop which is really really cool but although i did enjoy the mechanism in terms of the laptops the one that i did enjoy most was the mac mini look at this i can just put the mac mini right over here and bam it could be a little bit thicker as you can see it has a bit of space right over there so it could be another computer i would say about half a centimeter more and Bam, really, really cool. Now, the way that I would use it, and by the way, this one right over here, this docking station will work permanently after today with the Mac Mini, which is the computer that my uh, son, the oldest one, uses to help me on editing some of the videos. But look at this. It has the SD card right over here at the front, so easy to uh, reach. And then at the back, all the connectivity of the Mac Mini, plus the two USB Type-C ports, and then all the connectivity on this side. Now, the Mac Mini is one of those computers that has a slim profile, small footprint, but like this, it is even smaller. So really, really awesome and really versatile now i'm impressed with the way that this was built if you are curious to know the connectivity and the speeds that we will get let's go for it now at the front we will find a micro sd slot and a sd slot and then at the 
back if there's back in front of course we will find two usb type c ports with 10 gigabit speed and right over here uh, there is a slot for a m.2 ssd which we will check out the speeds and then we have two usb type a ports with 5 gigabit connectivity one ethernet port with 1 gigabit then 4k uh, 60 hertz hdmi and then we have a power delivery up to 100 watts and then the last one is is the uh, connectivity for the host. Now I did all sorts of tests. I did start with the SD card, which I was using a Sabrent 128 gigs, which is not the fastest one. The fastest is the one that I'm using, 256 gigs. I was reaching a maximum of about 500, 600 megabytes per second on peak on the writes, but on reads uh, it was slower. But this has to do with the card. So we were reaching about 90 megabytes per second, which is a lot. I also tested out the Ethernet connection. And although it's gigabit on my uh, house at this moment, I've got 500 megabits per second on download and about 100 on upload. So this will be the maximum that I can reach. But if you have a gigabit Ethernet connection, you will take full advantage of this Ethernet port. I also also tested out the 10 gigabit port with an external SSD from Sabrent and we were able to reach the 1000 megabytes per second mark. This will be the maximum because we are limited at 10 gigabit which is really really fast. I also tested the M.2 which is right over here and I placed in a Sabrent, a Rocket 4 Plus which is completely overkill. I would suggest and I will leave some links down below a lower end SSD because we we don't need 7000 megabytes per second reads and writes which is the maximum of that particular ssd we only need 1000 megabytes so we can go on a lower budget but the results were 1000 megabytes per second maximum on writes on the read side it was a bit lower but nonetheless this is the cap 1000 megabytes per second reads and on writes which is a lot. The power delivery will give us a maximum of 100 watts. So if I'm charging my laptop, which for example, the MacBook Pro will take a maximum of 60 watts. So I've got enough power. I don't need to connect the power adapter from the MacBook. I just need to connect the USB to the docking station and it will power the MacBook, which is really, really awesome. Now, the biggest advantage that I see right over here on the uh, laptop sides, and one of the tests that I usually do is, do I need to open the laptop to connect it to the display, or can I just put, put it like clamshell and it will work? And we have seen some docking stations that will not allow, but in this particular case, all I have to do is put in the laptop closed. When I arrive from work, I just need to put it on my docking station connect one single cable and then I will have my mouse I will have my keyboard I will have my display I will have everything connected to right over here my Ethernet port and so on and so forth and then connecting one single cable I will have full control of the laptop and I will not use this smaller display I will use the bigger display which I didn't say but it's up to 4k at 60 Hertz we also tested it out and basically that is it. I do feel that this docking station is one of the most versatile docking stations on the market right now, at least that I'm aware of. And we have reviewed more than 30 docking stations so far, which is not bad at all. But this one right over here has some differences. It's not the fastest one that we have seen. We have reviewed Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 docking stations, but the design is really, really awesome. And because of that, it will be the docking station that the Mac Mini will be on stand after today. Actually, this video will be edited on the Mac Mini like this on the docking station. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.